Hello friends and welcome back to the Unfortunate Archives. So at age 12, I started watching Naruto and something in my brain was altered forever. <laughs> so in this story, we are introduced to this 12 year old orphan, Naruto, who is training to become a ninja. And despite being a literal child, he is for some unknown reason, mistreated and hated by his entire village. So the story kind of follows his life as he trains to become the most powerful ninja in the world. This story isn't flawless by any means, but the reason that it resonates with so many people, myself included, is that it's incredibly emotional. It's a story about loneliness and the ways that it changes people for better and for worse. It's about living in a world that's built on corrupt systems and how different characters deal with that fact in vastly different ways. And at its core, it's always about this idea of not giving up and not giving into hatred. You can't really have an emotional story unless you have characters that people care about. And if you're here, I'm assuming you have at least one or two character in mind that you like, or maybe you just like me. Either way, you have great taste, so please allow me to give you some book recommendations based on your favorite Naruto characters and maybe psychoanalyze you a little bit along the way. <laughs> this was a character who takes all this unjustified hatred that's thrown at him and puts on a smile, pretends it doesn't bother him, and sets out to prove everyone wrong anyway. So if he's your favorite character, I'm guessing you really value resilience and optimism. But he's also a deeply, deeply lonely person, and he wants more than anything to be loved and appreciated. So I wonder if that's also something you relate to. <laughs> Regardless, there are so many books that follow an underdog's character rise to power. But what I really wanted was a book that looked at this tension between how other people perceive you and their treatment of you versus how you actually are as a person and how you treat other people. So a book series that captures this idea really well is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This story takes place in a much more dangerous version of Hogwarts, which is this sentient school where children with magical powers go to get educated, except they're constantly attacked by monsters who try to kill them. And in fact, many of them don't make it to graduation. And the ones who do don't make it through the graduation ceremony. <laughs> but essentially, we follow this girl, Elle, who, when she was a baby, was the subject of a prophecy that essentially said she would grow up to become this very powerful and evil sorceress who would end up destroying the magical world. So she's very much ostracized at school. And then our second main character is this boy Orion who is essentially the school's golden boy because he's very strong and keeps killing monsters to save the other students even though that's not how things are usually done at the school it's pretty much every man or woman for herself the reason I picked this series in particular as a match for Naruto's character is because one of the main themes is this question of what makes someone a hero or a villain and it particularly explores this through kind of showing the ways that both Elle and Orion are impacted by how the student body perceives them. Both of their stories actually capture different aspects of Naruto's character. For Elle, it's more her determination not to be evil, despite the fact that everyone already kind of views her as a villain. And for Orion, it's more about his loneliness and the fact that even though he is loved by everyone, they're essentially looking at him as a source of power and not as his own individual person. So I think if Naruto is your favorite character, you'll really enjoy the way that this series explores those themes as well. And even though it has some darker themes, it's ultimately a very optimistic, upbeat story. So I think you'll enjoy that as well. your favorite character i'm guessing you're not scared by a little darkness i also think we should be friends and i think you'll really love the puppy bar series by rf kuang 
this is one of my absolute favorite series of all time. So it's essentially this very dark fantasy series inspired by East Asia and China in particular. And we follow this girl, Rin, who learns to channel this fiery god of vengeance and becomes very powerful. So when war breaks out in her country, she's a very valuable soldier. But as she becomes more and more powerful, she discovers more secrets about her country's less than spotless past. And she begins to question who she should really be fighting for. The world building and the plot are amazing. The character dynamics are just so gorgeous and so compelling. And Rain happens to be another one of my favorite characters of all time. Which is not surprising because she's so similar to Sasuke. They're both very angry, vengeful characters. They can both be very unhinged and they make terrible decisions. But they're also in a ward and in a situation that's very terrible and kind of justifies their actions, at least, at least to me. Another thing that always reminds me of Sasuke and Rin's character is that she also has these very deep and complex relationships with other characters in the series and she can't seem to break them no matter how much she wants to and it always reminds me of Sasuke's relationships with like Naruto or his older brother so I think if you like Sasuke you're gonna appreciate the darkness in the story you're gonna enjoy Rin's general unhingedness and you know i think your angry 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 little soul is just gonna find this story very cathartic just you know prepare your cold heart to be broken that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> So many Naruto fans seem to hate Sakura. I don't hate her by any means, but sh talking about her makes me a bit sad because to me she just represents wasted potential. <laughs> like she's meant to be a member of the main trio of characters, but she always just feels like an afterthought in the story. And when you watch Naruto, it's very, very clear that Kishimoto was just not interested in writing female characters but he had to because women exist so he did it in the most kind of half-hearted way possible <laughs> and I think that really comes across it's a little better in the manga but by no means is it good still so it's quite sad and especially for little me who wanted more than anything to have one badass female ninja to like relate to it was very heartbreaking and especially because you got glimpses of how cool sakura could be but then she would fade into the background immediately afterwards and just not do anything cool ever again so it was very sad um and when i was thinking about a book to match her with i just kept thinking about this one story which is essentially all about being unappreciated and that is Manacled by Senlin Yu, which is actually a Harry Potter fan fiction. But don't worry if you don't want to read fan fiction or if you're not a Harry Potter fan. The author is actually adapting it by publication and it's going to come out under the name Alchemized, I believe. So I'm very, very excited. But essentially, this is a story about a long, very brutal war. It's about unsung heroes, it's about how healers and medical professionals are nowhere near as appreciated as warriors or soldiers, even when they actually get to see the most brutal sides of war. And it's essentially about being forgotten by the people who are closest to you, even when you sacrifice everything for them. So it's just, it's just very cathartic to read if you're a fan of sakura i think i think you'll really like this story and if you are a harry potter fan just go for it go for the fan fiction if you're not a harry potter fan just wait for the original um adaptation to come out as a book and read that one <laughs> Moving on from the main trio, we have Kakashi-sensei, their teacher, who is a very popular character in the fandom. 
And I think it's because he's just a chill dude. He's very strong, but he has plenty of his own very specific quirks and a very dry sense of humor. He just gives this sense like he's constantly amused by life and doesn't take anything too seriously. So if he's your favorite character, I'm guessing you kind of share that sense of humor and you're probably really going to enjoy several people are typing. This is technically a sci-fi novel, but really it's mainly satire and it follows this group of co-workers as one of them gets uploaded into Slack and the entire book then takes place on Slack across their conversations as he tries to tell people what happened to him, but they just assume that it's some sort of elaborate scam that he's playing on them to be allowed to work from home all the time. So it's so bizarre. It's so irreverent and extremely funny. I don't usually like these kind of stories where everything takes place on text or, or letters or like on Slack, but this was an exception, partly because of how hilarious I found it, and partly because I actually listened to this as an audiobook, and it has a full cast, so if you're also kind of on the fence about the whole, oh, it's all messages aspect of it, I think you can also try the audiobook, and it really helps. So if Kakash is your favorite character, I think you're gonna find this sort of bizarre, dry humor really amusing. But the book also has moments of unexpected wisdom, which is also very, I think, consistent with Kakash's character. So give it a go. If Guy is your favorite character, first of all, you're so much better than me at looking past appearances because I hate this man's character design so much. That actually kind of ruins his character for me a little bit, but I can admit that he is very cool. He has some really badass moments and he really stands for enthusiasm, optimism and just being a very good guy. So I think if he's your favorite character, you will absolutely love Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. <laughs> Weir? Weir? I don't know. Um, essentially, this book starts when this dude, whose name I've forgotten. I think it was Mike. I think it was Mike. Let's call him Mike. This white dude <laughs> called probably Mike. Uh, wakes up on a spaceship with zero memories and all he knows is that something's gone terribly wrong on Earth and he's meant to do something about it but he has no idea of what's gone wrong or what he's meant to do and he's you know moving very quickly through space. This is an absolutely like bingeable book it's so fun and you once you start you just can't put it down the audiobook is also quite amazing and the main character mike really embodies that enthusiastic optimistic attitude towards life and he also you know does a lot of cool stuff and solves a lot of really complex problems while maintaining the sense of humor of probably a 12 year old um, I, 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 I know I'm sounding a little sarcastic, but I really love this book. I think it's so much fun. And I think the humor is very on brand for Guy. So if he's your favorite character, trust me, I'm just messing with you. You should definitely give this book a go. It's a lot of fun. If Hinata's your favorite character, I'm guessing you really like stories of shy, sheltered characters who learn to slowly come out of their shells, but without turning into completely different people. So the ones who still maintain that core of being a quieter, more introverted individual. So you'll absolutely love Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This is a story about a young girl who's lived on an island her whole life. 
except in her words, seas are made out of deadly spores that react violently to the smallest drop of water. So it's a pretty big deal when the love of her life gets kidnapped and she decides to set sail on these deadly seas and go rescue him. The world building in this one is incredibly imaginative and the plot and the characters are very sweet and gentle. Even though it's an adult novel, it's told in the snarky fairy tale style of narration and it can very much be a comfort read. It's just very cozy and low stakes. Like you kind of know that nothing's gonna go horribly wrong. So I think if Hinata is your favorite character, this can very easily be one of your favorite books. There is nothing more annoying than a character that gets introduced as a genius and then ends up doing nothing smart in the story. But thankfully, that is the farthest thing from the truth when it comes to Shikamaru. His intelligence is constantly shown in a very convincing way and his battle scenes are some of the most satisfying to watch because he has a very simple power but the ways that he uses it is so intelligent and so fun to watch. But I think the main reason that so many people love him, myself included, isn't all of that potential and intelligence. It's the fact that despite all of that, all he wants is to be left alone and just lie down and stare at the clouds. Like he's the original anti-hustle culture king and I love him for it. Even as a child, I related very strongly to that sentiment. Um, I feel like that could have predicted some things in my life. Um, but anyway, let's, let's not open that can of worms. Um, I think if Shikamaru was your favorite character, you will absolutely love The Murder Bot's Diaries by Marta Wells. This is a hilarious series and it starts with four very short novels, novellas actually, so you can read them very quickly and it'll be very satisfying. We follow this cyborg who was designed as a security unit essentially meaning that he was designed as a robot to murder people but he managed to override his code and now he's alone on a spaceship and all he wants to do is just float in space and binge watch tv shows <laughs> like it's just the most relatable character i've ever read and you know he isn't even human <laughs> This series is pretty light on the science as far as sci-fi goes and it's much more focused on the character of Murder Bot and specifically the relationships that he builds kind of begrudgingly along the way. I'm convinced that he is Shikamaru reincarnated in another universe and I think you're gonna absolutely love this. It's such a great time and it really embodies the values of Shikamaru essentially, you know, not being productive. <laughs> if I'm honest, I wasn't actually planning on including Tsunade in the video until I realized that there's a book that's like literally the perfect match for her character. And that is Adventures of Amina al Serafi by S.A. Chakraborty. So the reason I say this is the perfect match is because I'm assuming if Tsunade is your favorite character, you enjoy reading or seeing older women be allowed to be incredibly cool and strong, be allowed to be a little crazy, brash, and a little unhinged while not being punished for it by the story. And that's exactly what Amina Serafi is. She is a 50-year-old pirate queen who decides to come out of retirement for one final adventure and gets all her crew together to do so. And then we follow her as she battles monsters and tells us about all of her husbands and all her adventures uh, before she decided to retire. And she curses and gambles and drinks and she's not gonna let a bad knee stop her. So it's a hilarious story, it's such a good time and it's just your classic pirate story given an upgrade because of 
how amazing Amina is as the captain. If you like Sudade, I promise you, you're gonna absolutely love this story. I swear, if Amina and Sunade ever met, they would be the closest of friends. They would get along so well and they would be unstoppable. very rarely seen a character have an entire fandom in a chokehold the way that this man does. This is Sasuke's older brother and you know you have to hand it to him. He is very very cool. He is extremely powerful. He is a prodigy with a very complex backstory and he does some of the most selfless and some of the most cruel acts in the entire story. So I think he's just a very fascinating character with an incredibly cool design, which never hurts. If Itachi is your favorite character, however, I think you should absolutely read The Traitor Baru Koromorant by Seth Dickinson. In this book, we follow Baru, whose very small island nation is colonized by the Empire of Masks. So she spends years working her way up through their ranks by learning to be an incredibly intelligent strategist and economist, so she can one day have enough power to help free her people. The plot in this series has so many twists and turns, there are a lot of complicated politics, betrayals, moral complexity, characters often have to join the opposite side to where they would want to be, and we have a lot of very intelligent characters who have to make terrible choices in the service of what they view as the greater good. So if Itachi is your favorite character, this is going to be right up your alley and you should absolutely give it a go. I generally also think this is a great series that many people can enjoy. There you have it, friends. If your favorite character wasn't included, let me know who they are in the comments. And if I have a book recommendation, I will reply. Other than that, you know, have a good life. <laughs> and like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>